Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the fields of Arla, which is Uwe Rosenberg's big, big, heavy strategy game of 2014. And this one uh, is treading some familiar ground. It's all about trying to run a successful farm and homestead in the fields of Arla, which is a town, I think it's in northern Germany. Is that right? Uh, in East Frisia, which apparently has a lot of really important personal significance to designer Uwe Rosenberg because he grew up in and around that area and he comes from a family of farmers apparently. There's a little bit of autobiographical stuff in the manual. But this is not a uh, autobiographical documentary. This is a run through of Fields of Arla, so let's start running. Okay, so as you can see, even though this is a two player only game, it is a huge monster of a game. It takes up a ton of real estate. Although to be fair, if you want this to take up a bit less real estate, you can t you don't need this board at all. The only purpose of this board is to hold all these tiles, and you could just stack the tiles off or you know somewhere else. You don't need so. But even still, even if you uh, jettison that board, it's still a ginormous table devouring game, even for only two players, because each of us has our own farmland and our own barn where we store our big equipment. We have this travel board that indicates all the neighboring towns, uh, Emden and Lear and Bremen and, and uh, uh, Dornum and all these other places that we can travel to engage in trade. Let's see, so I've got mine, Jen's got hers up there. And then there's this huge action board with, what is it? It's a worker placement game. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, I believe, unless I miscounted, 30 spots you can send your workers to to engage in all sorts of Uwe Rosenberg, big farming simulation style actions like, you know, um, uh, planting fields and and harvesting goods and converting goods into other goods and building buildings and all the stuff you would expect. So we're going to start doing that. Now, like I said, this is a worker placement game. And at the beginning of the game, each player has four workers, Ma, Pa, and two strapping young sons and the first player goes on top and the second player goes on bottom as we line ourselves up. I will be the first player. I've got the lighthouse over here next to me. So I'm the first player in this game. And now the game is interesting. It takes place over nine rounds, five of which are in the good months and four of which are in the bad months. These are like the summer months and the winter months. And so what we'll do is in the first round, we each of us will do four actions off of out of all these 30 actions then we'll move you know we go from our first summer to our first winter and then we will do um, four more actions and then four actions four actions so over the course of the game you will do 36 actions um five ninths of them in the summer and four ninths of them in the winter and that's important because even though there are 30 actions you can do half of them you can see all these on the green parts oopsie Half of them are summertime actions, and half of them are wintertime actions. So you don't have to be quite so overwhelmed. It's not like there are that many choices. We're in the summer right now. So we can um, be fishermen. We go to the grocery. We can do wool weaving, um, do a colonist, peat cutter, dike builder, clay worker, farmer, forester, woodcutter, master, carpenter, builder, warden, and laborer. So those are our options. We will not be doing um, peat boatman, tanner, linen weaver, butcher, cattle trader, grocer, um, builder, merchant, potter, baker, wood trader, master, wainwright, dike warden, carpenter, or laborer. Kind of. There is actually a way that even though we're in the summer, one of us as a, in a two-player game will have the option to do one winter action. So for one of us, there will be at least one turn where we have 30 actions to choose from. Uh, your options are wide open this game. And but, but, uh, let's see, uh, a couple more things. At the beginning of the game, I've got three mores, as does Jen. These need to be cleared out because at the end of the game, if I don't, I'll lose four points. So basically, clearing out each more is an opportunity to get points. And you flip them, and then that gives you a bunch of peat. Clear out this peat, and it scores you another point and gives you two new places that you can build on your farmstead. I've also got four peat here I've got to clear out, which will score me three points and give me another opportunity to build on my farmstead. I've got a wheat field and a flax field. These are both going to start generating at the end of summer. I've got a stall with one horse in it. 
which if I get another horse, I could breed them at the end of winter. And then the interesting thing is, probably, probably the most interesting element of this game, or the newest one, is the notion I've got dikes. The fields of Arla are flooded. You can see as, as we go farther and farther away from the land we've reclaimed, um, all of this land up here I cannot build on because it's all floodplains. But this line here indicates a dike that I have at the beginning of the game, which means I can build anywhere south of it. Over the course of the game, I can start picking these up, and hey, I've moved my dike line. Now this is all dry land. And then over time, I can move more up, and then I've claimed even more land. And so you have the opportunity to claim more land back from the sea, I guess, so that you can build. And if you claim all the land, get all your dikes up here, that's three more points you score. But you'll also score lots of points at the end of the game for having lots of, um, uh, lots of goods. At the beginning of the game, I've got five food, four wool, three flax, two furs, one wheat. All right. And the more of these I get, the more points I have. And then also, the more I travel to the neighboring towns. If I ever travel to Bremen, after I'm done trading with them, I take this and I flip it, put it here, and hey, I just scored three points. If I do some more travel to, say, Auruk, I flip it, and now at the end of the game, I've got four points. So the more you travel and engage with distant trade, the more points you get. And of course, you get points too for building all these different buildings and for getting more and more tools. Oh my goodness, so much stuff. Last thing I'll talk about before I start playing is these are all the buildings that we could build, and you know, we're kind of in a race to build. Half of them are randomly chosen every time you play, and the other half are preset. These four were randomly chosen, as were these two. These six will always be here every game, as will these three, but these ones are randomly chosen. So you have 50% of them are unique every time you play, and 50% of them are preset. And you know what? I've been talking about this game too much and not playing it. You've been very patient. Let's start playing. I am the first player because I got the lighthouse. I will pick up my, my firstborn son here and I will set him to work. Now remember, I'm in the summer, so I pretty much have access to any of these worker actions. But if I want to, I could do one winter action instead. Once either me or Jen, Jen's the second player, she's the red player, once either Jen or I initiate any winter action, the other player can't do it. That's called a special action. So I could do a winter action, and then my other three actions will all have to be in summer. Now here's the interesting thing about that. The whoever does this, whoever goes over and initiates a winter action, they are giving up the opportunity to go first when we switch over to winter in the second round. So if I want to go first in winter, I better not do any winter actions now. But here's the interesting thing for me. If neither of us do a winter action at the end of the round, the first player marker will switch over to Jen anyway. So I am very heavily encouraged because I'm going to lose my first player marker for winter. So I might as well do a freebie winter action and get to do it earlier than I would normally be able to do. But on the flip side, if I don't, but Jen does, then I will get to hold on to the first player marker and I can be first player in summer and winter. So that's, there's a little bit of brinksmanship with all that of who's going to be the first to jump the gun and do a winter action in the middle of summer. Now it's not going to be me because I think I'm going to start out, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and do a master action of all these different actions. You know, planting forests, plowing fields, um, you know, going to the grocer, going fishing, all these things I could do, I'm doing the master action. Now, what does this do? The, the master action is a very, very cool one. It lets me improve the quality of my tools. And I can uh, improve a number of tools equal to the number of workbenches I have. Now, at the beginning of the game, both of us have two workbenches. So that means I can improve two tools because I've got two workbenches. And I do that just by paying. Like to improve a workbench costs two clay, to improve um, shovels costs one wood. I pay, and at the beginning of the game, I've got four wood and four clay and three peat. So I pay, and then I just move this marker. And so what do I want to improve? Hmm. Well, see, I mean, obviously all the tools have different effects depending. I mean, if I improve my weaving looms, I'll be better at weaving wool. If I improve my shovels, it'll improve my ability to build dikes and to shovel clay. You know what? What the heck? That sounds pretty nice. Let's improve my shovels. So, I go, I, I had three shovels at the beginning of the game, but now I've got four, but I got to pay one wood for it. So I just paid a wood. Now that's one. Remember, I get to do two tool upgrades because I've got two workbenches. I think my second upgrade is I'm going to pay two clay and I'm going to improve my workbench itself. 
And now a couple things have happened. I just I have a victory point now. At the end of the game, a lot I can get victory points for upgrading a lot of my tools. I've just earned a victory point. And since I now have three workbenches, that means I get to do three upgrades. I've done one, I've done my second, and suddenly I've got one more upgrade I can do. Now what am I gonna do? Let's see here. Um, <laughs> now interestingly, some of these tools help me in the summer, like the fish trap, I can fish in the summer. So if I improve the fish trap, uh, you know, if I get myself more fish traps, I will do better fishing. A lot of these, like the tanning beams, they'll help me in the winter. If I want to, um, you know, start converting furs into leather, as an example. Hmm, actually, that's interesting. What the heck? My last one, I'm going to pay one more wood, bink, and I'm going to improve my fleshing beams. And so I started with three fleshing beams at the beginning of the game, but now I've got five. And you can see that also earns me one victory point at the end of the game. And now that kind of puts me into a certain mindset. That means I am now better at converting furs into leather goods than Jen is. And that starts to give me a direction in life, something that I might want to pursue more often. So that was my first action. Now it is Jen's turn, and Jen's paw character is going to go out and do something. Now what is Jen going to do? Let's see, I think, I think Jen is going to be the first to build a building. She is going to build a building. Okay. Now, all these buildings are out, and at, above the buildings it says, like, um, if I want to build any of these super deluxe awesome things that are worth 15 points, 15 points, 15 points, because they are literally the village church and two different castles. If I want to build a castle or a church, it costs me three timber, three bricks, and 15 food. Now that's a lot. I'm sorry, but this is Jen, by the way. She's got no timber, no um, bricks, because she's got wood, but wood has to be flipped to convert into timber. So Jen has no timber. I mean, actually, Jen only has, she should have, start with four wood, not three. Oops, that was a mistake. All right, there we go. So Jen, you know, she couldn't build any of these because she doesn't have the timber or and the food. We each start with five food. That's a lot of food. Food is like money in this game, basically. So Jen's not going to build any of these. They're way too expensive. Um, let's see, and these all require either the luxury building materials, bricks or timber, and again, Jen doesn't have any of those. She doesn't have this. So, she can only build one of these four buildings, but these are kind of the starting buildings anyway. And to build any of these requires one wheat, which both of us started the game with, or grain, and your choice, one, one wood or clay, or the upgraded versions, timber or brick. So, Jen has that. She's going to pay one, where is it? One wheat. So that was her only wheat. She's out of wheat now. And she has to pay either, well, she doesn't have timber or brick. So, she's going to pay wood or clay because we started with that. And what is she going to build? She's got four to choose from. And again, these are random. And whichever one she picks, that's going to define something she is very good at and will kind of, again, give her some direction over the course of the game as well. She could build the Plowmaker's Workshop. Which means, um, oops, wait a minute, oh dear, oh dear, this should not be in the game. Oopsie dupes, I screwed up my setup. Because you'll notice, the, these are the green buildings, there's dark ones and light ones. You're supposed to either go all dark or all light. The light ones are the ones that you're supposed to do when you're first starting to play the game, they're like the intro. But I'm not playing an intro game, I'm playing a full game. So I need to remove this, and oh crap, I gotta go into the box, sorry folks. Ah. Shoot, now I only have one hand. Glad to put the camera down for a sec. Oh, apologies. Let's just get out a random green building. Come here, you. Where are the buildings? Give me a... Oh, they're not here. They're not in the box. Where are the green buildings? If they're not here in the box. Oh, wait, wait. Nope, that's a yellow building. Oh, come on. All the green buildings have disappeared. Oh, there they are over there. They weren't in the box. They weren't in the box at all. Oh, apologies for my slapdash. They're hidden here behind my drinking water. Okay, let's just grab a dark green. This one, it's the weaving parlor. Okay. Ugh, silly me. All right. Thanks for your patience, everybody. So, Jen ha can pick any four of these. The weaving parlor, which means she can turn flax into linen. Um, and she could clear peat every time she does it. Now, these are all actions you can do normally. I mean, you know, uh, you know the, 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 any one of these four things can be done here. You can turn stalls into stable over here at the carpenter. You can, um, you know, you can get food in a lot of different ways. You can get linen from flax over here at the linen weaver. Um, but 
Having this building means you can do the action here anytime you want for free. You know, so Jen could, anytime she wants, she can turn flax into linen. Instead of having to use 25% uh, of her workforce to come over here to the linen weaver. So she could do that. She could have litter storage, which means she could turn, basically she can turn flax, excess flax she's got, into horses. But only if she's got a certain number of horses. So if she really wants to start, you know, making a, uh, an army of horses, the carpenter workshop, normally... You, um, you, you come over here, here's the carpenter, lets you pay two bricks, or I'm sorry, yeah, two bricks to turn a stall into a stable. But if Jen has her own carpenter workshop, well, she only has to spend one brick, but four food, and that is cheaper. And she can do it anytime she wants. So those are all good. What is Jen going to choose? Oh my gosh, it's a tough, tough choice. Um, you know what? I think, I think she will take the weaving part. She likes that notion. So this is going to take it. And now she has to build it on her land. And remember, like me, at the beginning of the game, she only has two dry lands because this is as far as her die goes. So she has to build it here. Now that scored her one point. And remember, she paid her wheat. She also now has to pay one lumber or one clay. I guess she will get rid of a, a lumber. All right. So that was Jen's first action. <laughs> Plus some... Some mistaken goofiness on my part, sorry. She went to the builder, she built a building. Now, on to my second of four actions. And, let's see. Well, you know what? Since I have improved my shovels, and I'm good at shoveling now, shovels, um, the more shovels I have, I have four shovels, as opposed to three, they imp improve my ability to shovel up clay. If I go to the clay worker, I can get one clay per shovel. So I can get four clay, or I can come over here to the dike builder, which I think is what I'm going to do. And now, to come to the dike builder, first of all, I get my choice. I get a free cow or a free sheep. I gotta say, by the way, this game makes it rain resources. Um, there are a million ways to get sheep. I mean, I could get sheep from the dike builder. I could get sheep from the grocer. I could get sheep from the, oh, the grocer in winter or from the... Um, right, no, that's... Uh, yeah, I, I, I give them up for the butcher. I, there's a lot of different ways I could get sheep. I think there's a few more I'm missing here. It's like four or five. Oh, I could get, if I go fishing, I could get sheep. There's tons of ways to get resources. So, I can get a cow or sheep. I think I'm going to take a cow because, strictly speaking, they're a little bit more valuable because at the end of summer... This cow will generate milk for me. So I've got myself a moo moo cow. All right, now where am I going to put it on my land? I could put it in my stall, but you can't mix animals. So I can't put a horse and a cow in a stall. Um, I can put up to two animals of any type in an empty field. So I'll just let this cow over here just kind of graze this field. If I run out of um, fields, I can also put individual animals on my dikes as, as an opportunity as well. So i got plenty of space to store my animals. So i got a cow. At the end of summer, this guy's going to give me some delicious milk. Okay. So that was my... Oh, wait. Well, I'm not done yet. So i got to choose a cow or a sheep. And for every pair of shovels, and I've got four shovels, so that means twice I get to do a dike action. So let's do that. Um... Let's see here. Oops, sorry. My dike should have been like this. This is how it started out. I've got this complete dike. So my first dike action will be this. Boop! And now all of this land is buildable. And then on my second dike action, I'll take this one over here and move it up here. This is really cute, by the way. There's lots of nice little touches like this. This reminds me of Malta, because these are just like three old dudes sitting out on a bench on a dike. And that's all they do their whole lives sitting out there. And so I now have three more places I can build. And as you can see, over time, I can push the ocean back. And if I push it all the way back, I'll score three points. Okay. So that was my second action, taking advantage of my excellent, excellent shovels. Jen's second action. Now, what is she going to do? All right. Well, she, she has a special power too, right? She can turn flax. And now the interesting thing is, Jen can do this anytime she wants. Anytime she wants, she can turn three flax into a linen, plus it will let her cut one peat. Now, at the beginning of the game, I forget, how much flax do we have? We have three flax. You know what? Jen, is she going to do it right away? Does she need linen right now? Yeah, baby. I think that's what she is going to do. Jen. Oh. All right. Oh, she could do that. Or she could just do that. That's a simple thing. Um, oh, my goodness. See, because what Jen's thinking about is she is thinking a little bit more long term about what kinds of goods does she want to produce so that she can go trading stuff in these different towns. So I was looking at, you know, where could she send linen to? Lear wants linen. 
If Jen has linen from you know, using her weaving parlor, she would be able to send the linen to Lear and make three food. And like I said, food is basically money in this game. The interesting thing is, you can, Jen can only ever make one delivery to Lear, and then never again, because the Lear thing will come over here, and it will have scored her points, and she can't deliver to Lear anymore. So, when you, she makes her delivery, she wants to make it count. She doesn't want to just deliver, you know, a single linen. She wants to deliver, like, all this stuff. So she could get 6 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2. 16 food in one delivery. So Jen could be setting a goal for herself to save up to be able to get all of this stuff and make one massive delivery and score 16 food. 16 food, by the way, is enough food to build the church or the castle or the other castle and score 15 points and get another bonus beside. So you can start to see, there's lots of combo change. You've got to set a goal for yourself and then just start going after it. So Jen knows she's good at making linen. Although interestingly, if she used all three of her flax to make the linen, she wouldn't have any flax. So she's going to need more flax to make this delivery. She's also going to need a cow, and she is either going to need leather, wool, or linen clothing. So she wants to get all of this stuff, plus she will need a cart big enough to deliver all this stuff, which means she's going to have to build um, a cart that, like this size or this size, one of the big carts, because otherwise she won't be able to carry all this stuff. Now those carts cost five wood and a horse. She's got a horse, four wood and two horses. So if Jen is thinking all about long term, she wants to make this delivery to Lear. She's got several things she's got to do. She's got to get, well, how much wood does she have? She has. Three wood. She's got to get two more wood to be able to build her cart. She's got to get um, two more flax to have enough flax after she converts. She's got to get a cow. And I just took one of the only places to get a cow. Although Jen can come over here to the grocer and get a cow. And she'd get, well, you know what? Actually, that's pretty good. Let's say Jen's second action. She's going to go to the grocer. That's a nice all rounder. So what does she get? She gets one timber which is wood flipped. Now, every timber you have at the end of the game is worth half a point, but Jen is probably going to be using it. I mean, heck, th this might be some of the timber Jen uses to build a castle or something like that. So Jen gets a timber. Although, it's her choice. I'm sorry, no, she doesn't take the timber. She could take timber, brick, or animal. Jen is going to take an animal. She is going to take a lovely moo moo cow as well. And she's going to put it um, over here in her empty... Ah, with heck, she'll just go ahead and put it on a dike. She, and she's planning on sending that cow off to Lear later on. But in the meantime, she'll be able to milk it. So, instead of timber or brick, she took a cow. Then, she gets one food and one treated leather. All right, so where's the leather? The leather is over here. Now, this leather is worth one point. But the leather, by going to... Oh, where is it? There's a place you can go to convert the leather into leather goods. And this is what Jen wants to have, so she can take that off to Lear. So, but in the meantime, she's got her leather. And, oh, she gets one more food. So she goes from five food to six food. All right. So that was Jen's second action. She got a little bit of everything at the grocer. Okay. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Let's see here. Now then, what am I going to do next? Ha, ha, ha. All righty. So I got an action. And again, you know, I got to be thinking, what's my big strategy? What am I trying to do overall? Or you, know, or, you know, you can just play it by ear. You can just kind of mess around. But you really do need to take advantage of it. Now, see, I, what was my other tool? My other tool was, I'm better at tanning. So maybe I want to get myself some more furs so that in the winter, because right now I've got two furs. But since I've got uh, five fleshing beams, I want to get three more furs so I can really push my fleshing beams to the max. So maybe I want to go and get me some, um, some more furs. Now, where could I do that? Well, I, you know, there, I could go to, um, let's see, I could, well, the interesting thing is, the easiest way to do it is, remember, I can do one winter action in summer. So I could come over here to the butcher. Now, if I do that, uh, no, Jen, will, nobody else will be able to do a winter action in the summer, and I will definitely be giving this up. But by going to the butcher, I could slaughter an animal, get three food, and, um, what do you call it? Two furs, and also, um, for every cow, get plus one food. So I could do that. Now instead, I could just come over here to the builder's merchant, not slaughter my animals. I'll get two furs and two building materials. Where else could I get fur? I mean, it's, you know, every time I think about what I need to do, I need to look over the board because there's a billion places you could go to do stuff. Um, but it looks like, 
And actually, if I recall correctly, the manual has a very, very nice little summary of everything here on the back about, you know, what do I need blank for? And, you know, so it gives you like a nice little summary of, of all the different goods that are in the game and what they're good for. Let's see here now. And ba -ba 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 -ba. Right, I still got to decide where I'm going to go. And you know what? Gosh, we're at 25 minutes right now. I think, actually, halfway through summer, that's a pretty good place to stop because you definitely have the basic ideas, you know, the basic work replacement, how you can go, how you can, you can jump ahead to do other stuff, how we're in a race, um, you know, to, to grab the items and, and, you know, expand all our stuff in a million different ways we could go. But if you'd like, you can hit the button that's on screen now and follow the show notes to go to the extended playthrough. And I will finish summer and I will do a full winter as well. So I'll finish the first two rounds. So you'll get to see some more stuff. You'll get to see hopefully some animal breeding, some, you know, crops coming in, milking of cows, all that stuff. Or you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.